Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are making a matcha latte, iced, hot, and matcha tea. It has been my favorite drink in the fall, so I wanted to share it with you guys, and then we're going to get cozy by the fireplace and enjoy our drinks and talk about some October goals that I have for myself. So I hope you guys really enjoy this video. I already filmed a video all about matcha and that is more of just a video in general about all the benefits of matcha, how to store it, how to know that you're getting like the best quality, best grade, things like that. So that video is going to be separate because it just would have been way too long. Um, so this video is focusing on the recipes and I wanna jump right into it. Grab yourself a matcha latte or grab yourself like a hot tea, a hot coffee, something warm and cozy. Get into your pajamas or something really comfortable and we're just gonna hang out together. It's gonna to be a casual video and I hope you enjoy. If you guys don't know what matcha is, I recommend watching my first matcha video and let's get right into my recipes. Okay hey guys, so welcome to my matcha setup. So I have my matcha bowl, my fine sieve, my bamboo scoop, and of course a little tray that I got for my bowl because it's super cute. This is the tea that I'm going to be using. I got it on Amazon. And I also have my bamboo whisk there with its holder. Super cute to just have on your countertop. And my handheld whisk that I also got on Amazon. And this is the milk we're going to be using. It's by the brand Oatly. It is an oat milk. It's the low fat version and I absolutely love it love it. Then you're going to heat up some water. You don't want it to be boiling, but you want it to be, um, you know, close to boiling, very hot. And then you're going to use your bamboo scoop and you're going to scoop out a tablespoon, I mean teaspoon, and this is going to give you the perfect amount every single time. That's why I love the bamboo scoop. And then what I'm doing there is I am sifting the powder through the fine sieve so that you don't get any clumps in your matcha drink no matter which version you're making. In this case we are making my iced matcha latte. And you're just gonna keep sifting until every single piece of it is gone in your bowl. And then you're gonna go in with two ounces of hot water and then you just pour it in the bowl with your powder and then immediately start whisking it with that bamboo whisk. You wanna do it in M-shaped motions. That is the way that the Japanese have done it for years and it really is the best way to go ahead and mix up. You can also do it and mix it up with some circular motions as well as you see that I'm doing here. I seem to think that it works best that way to make it like really, really smooth. And then after that, we are just going to throw everything in the sink, everything that's dirty. We're going to take our, in this case, I have a mason jar filled with ice. Any cup will do. Just make sure you have ice. And you're going to pour your milk into it. I don't really like measure exactly how much milk. It depends on how much I feel like I need that day. <laughs> um, and since I was going to work, I made a big one. And then you're just going to pour your matcha mixture into the milk with ice in it. And then if you want, you can add a little bit more milk on top like I like to do. And then after that, you're just gonna use your milk frother. It doesn't matter if it's handheld or if you have an electric one, that's awesome too. I'm thinking about looking into getting one of those as well. And you're just gonna turn it on and it's gonna start mixing it all together for you. And this is when you really see that green color come together. And it's just so pretty. Guys, <laughs> I literally love iced matcha lattes. They make me so happy. Get your stainless steel straw and you are all set to go. Ugh, oh, guys, this was just so good. Okay, guys, welcome back to my matcha setup. We're gonna go ahead and we are going to pour one fourth of a cup of milk into our measuring cup and then we're gonna put it in a pot and start heating that up on low heat. Then we're gonna go in with our matcha powder, the same one that I used um, each time. It's gonna be the same powder every time. You're just gonna sift that through with the bamboo scoop again until everything is gone in the sieve. So it's really just the same thing that I did in the first video. We're just gonna heat up the milk instead. So after that's done, you're just gonna throw everything in the sink once again. And oh my God, guys, 
please tell me how cute that mug is. As you can see, the milk is ready. It's super hot. You don't want it boiling just the same as the water. And you're gonna go ahead and combine the matcha powder with the boiling water again. Whisk it in the M-shaped motions, mix with circular motions, and you're good to go. But yeah, I got that mug at Target and it's just so adorable. It was perfect for my Jessica Christine Halloween series. <laughs> So once you're done mixing the mixture, you're going to go ahead and pour the milk into another cup. And the reason why I do this is because I want to froth the milk before I mix it with the matcha um, water mixture that we just have over there. So I'm gonna turn on the handheld frother, froth the milk up. You don't have to do it for that long, it froths pretty quickly and you can really start to see it right there. You're gonna pour some of it in with the matcha mixer. Uh, you can really see it there starting to foam up. And then you're just gonna pour all of that into your mug that you plan on using. You can do it from the, that same bowl, but I like to use a mug. And then pour the rest of your milk inside of it. And then you can go ahead and mix the entire thing yourself if you want, and this will make it look like you just left a cafe, guys. It is so cute, it's so pretty and classy looking. I absolutely love it. The last and final step is my pumpkin pie seasoning that I'm adding on for the fall. It is my new favorite thing to add on to my matcha lattes. I hope you guys enjoyed and enjoy the next recipe. All right, and then my last recipe, which is matcha tea. Guys, how cute is this mug? Which is boo. I got this one last year at Target um, and I still have it so this is the perfect mug to use too for my Halloween series. So we're going to do the same thing we did today. Pour in that 4 ounces of water and then you're just going to immediately add that to your matcha powder like I did in the two previous recipes. Go ahead and whisk it up real good. You guys are probably pros by now. I can't wait to make this with you. And then just immediately pour it into the mug of your choice. It is the easiest recipe I have here and I hope you guys enjoy. Have a good day. Hey guys, so I hope you enjoyed my three matcha recipes. I'm currently drinking my hot matcha latte and this is definitely my favorite recipe that I've made so far. Oh my gosh, it's just so good. What I've learned is my favorite milk to make matcha lattes with is oat milk. Oat milk is really good for you and not only is the brand Oatly like taste really good, but it just froths better for the matcha lattes and that's why I like to use it. So anyways, I thought that we would get cozy together by the fire and talk about some goals um, for the month of October that I want to work on. And this month I have three goals, three main goals that I want to work on. So I'm briefly going to go through them with you and, you know, grab a cup of tea, cup of coffee or make a latte and just relax with me for the night. So my top three October goals that I want to work on this month are number one is cook fall meals at home every single night and if I don't have to every single night just make sure that I don't eat out at all. So if I have leftovers one day that's fine I don't have to cook the next night but just making sure that every single meal that I eat is something that I've cooked myself or is home cooked by say my boyfriend. He's been um, actually cooking me a lot of fall cute uh, really healthy meals and it's just been amazing after work. So I've really been uh, focusing on cooking at home. And that is where a lot of my recipes are gonna come in on my channel. I'm gonna do a fall what I eat in a day because you all love to see my recipes on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you do, at justchristinex3 because I post, guys, I post so many amazing recipes, just really wholesome, really healthy recipes that I think would be really valuable to you guys. And even if you just want to learn something new for the fall and kind of get some inspiration for different fall meals. So um, I know Brussels sprouts are huge. So I want to start incorporating a lot of like Brussels sprouts into my meals. I want to incorporate butternut squash. I've made some really good pizzas. So that's the other thing. 
Even though my goal is to cook meals at my house, I can cook whatever I want. So I can cook desserts, I can cook breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, whatever it may be. Because no matter what you cook at home, it's always going to be healthier than ordering takeout from somewhere or eating at a restaurant or buying something in a store. For instance, I really want to bake an apple pie and I'm going to make a fall video featuring me making an apple pie or apple crisp, something with apple. I haven't decided exactly what yet, but I love warm apple pie with vanilla ice cream. I'm thinking about doing that in a vegan version and I'm super excited because I, I am going apple picking. So stay tuned for that recipe, but I want to make the apple pie recipe because no matter what, it's going to be healthier when I cook it myself rather than going even to Whole Foods and buying an apple pie because the thing about cooking at home is that you know exactly what ingredients are going into your meals and how much of each ingredient are going into your meals. The main things that are really unhealthy that you consume when you're out and about, never mind like preservatives and stuff like that, but salt, sugar, and oils. You don't know how much of that stuff is being loaded up into your meals, guys, just to, you know, make it seem like it's extra good because you're eating at a restaurant or you're buying something in a store. So usually it's very flavorful and very good. And usually the reasons for that is because there's a lot of bad stuff added into this, those things. So at least you have control over what you're putting into your food when you eat at home. So that is my first challenge of the month is to make sure that I do that every single day. Okay. My second goal and challenge of the month of October is make a berry and leafy green smoothie every single day. So what do I mean by that? I've already been doing this if you follow me on Instagram, making smoothies every single day. Um, and basically in every single smoothie I've made so far, I've incorporated blueberries, raspberries, and strawberries, and an occasional banana. But why am I focusing on the three berries? It is so important, guys. Berries are the one of the best antioxidants you could ever have. They're a low carb food. So a lot of fruits are high in carbs, such as apples, and they are very high in sugars and stuff. So berries are not. They are a very low carb friendly food because of their low net carb um, count, which just means that they're very high in fiber. So you subtract the fiber from the carb and that gives you the net carb and it's amazing. The fact that they're high in fiber will reduce feelings of like hunger and it will increase your feelings of being full, which is something that's super, super important for me. Um, it really keeps me energized and feeling full throughout the day when I'm at work. So I don't have to go and, you know, purchase like something when I'm working, some food or some snack or something. It really holds me over. So it ends up saving me money too um, in the long run, which is really nice. The berries are also low in calories and they're also high in vitamin C. So vitamin C along with many other vitamins and nutrients. But vitamin C is the main one and it's just literally the best fruits to ever put in your smoothies are berries for sure. So I want to start incorporating those and spinach into my smoothies which I already do every single day. Smoothies are the best way to ingest spinach. So the reason why you want to eat raw spinach versus like cooked spinach is because when you cook spinach, it takes out all the nutrients and the main nutrient and antioxidant is lutein, which is good for eye health and heart health. It helps prevent um, heart attacks, believe it or not, and it also helps uh, prevent any damage to your eyes. So it's really, really good, guys, for, you know, aging and things like that, and it's super important. So basically, when you put spinach in a smoothie, you're chopping it up into tiny pieces, and you're mixing it with milk, and that is helping it. And you could do non-dairy milk, obviously. I have been using either coconut milk or oat milk recently. I've tried to kind of stay away from almond milk because I kind of want to like switch it up. I would always use that before. And it's been a really nice change. So uh, lutein is a really important nutrient and putting it in your smoothies makes it so that your body can better absorb the lutein at a 
quicker and faster pace. Basically, when you ingest a smoothie, it goes right into your bloodstream. Like any like liquid, like even juicing, it's gonna go right into your bloodstream and you're gonna immediately absorb that. So it's really important to put spinach in your smoothies for that reason. That's another great antioxidant. And yeah, you really, guys, that's the best way to ingest your fruits and veggies for the day is through a smoothie because you're getting like all of those nutrients. My third goal and challenge for the month of October is to walk every single day, uh, whether it be for 15 minutes, for an hour, it doesn't matter how long the walk is, but because of my day job and I'm constantly just inside with no windows actually, um, it becomes like really sad for me because I love nature and being outside. So my new goal is to start waking up earlier and going on a walk every single day no matter how long it is because this is the best time of year. This is my favorite time of year ever with all of the fall foliage and it is the prettiest time. It is when the pretty it is when the planet looks its prettiest. So I definitely have to start doing that and appreciating the foliage and the fall time and this is the time when it's best to be outside. So I am going to walk every single day for the month of October and see how it goes. It'll, it'll be good uh, alone time to kind of go over my intentions for the next couple of months out of the years and, you know, just appreciate the present moment and everything around me. So yeah, I am so excited to start these goals and challenges and the majority of these goals and challenges I've already been doing um, at the end of September. So it's just gonna be a, a, a full month of doing these goals and these challenges and it's going, they're just great healthy habits, guys. So leave in the comments healthy habits that you are picking up for the month of October uh, let me know some challenges that you're working on too, or if you decide to incorporate some of my challenges into your daily lives, let me know in the comments. And make sure to follow me on Instagram and tag me in any of your recipe posts that you make of the matcha lattes and the matcha tea. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed sitting by the fire with me and just chilling out and taking it easy, relaxing. I don't know if you can hear the crackling of the fire or not, but it's so relaxing. Thank you guys so so much for watching. I will see you in my next video in my Jessica Christine Halloween series. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.